Greetings, it's me, Waifu Belector, and I'm back once again to talk about what has to be my favorite subject because I just can't seem to stop making videos about it. Of course, I'm talking about live service games. But for this video, I kind of want to talk about pseudo live service games, the more in between oddly hybridized multiplayer experiences that we could be seeing a lot of soon enough. So let's go ahead and get into it. But before we do, if you end up enjoying the video, then please subscribe to the channel. I'll absolutely love you for it. But OK. Let's get started. So as I've documented and critiqued the journey of live service games, I fairly recently talked about the settling down of live service as a framework. What I mean by that is we've moved beyond the point where we are okay with an overabundance of live service games that we can take our pick of because we have now more or less taken our picks. We've chosen the games we want, Fortnite, Warzone, etc., and we've discarded the rest, Knockout City, Marvel's Avengers, so on and so forth. It's now a lot tougher to break into what is now a more tightly packed and solidified framework, but there are still a lot of games to come that have been in development and have already been planned to be live service, and changing that idea isn't so simple in the middle of development. So we're likely still going to be seeing a decent amount of battle pack wielding live service games releasing in the next few years. Although most of them will likely be dead before you know it. But for some of these games, I can't help but wonder what the actual goal is. More specifically, I want to know, is the plan actually to live forever? Are all these games really planning to try and be the next Destiny 2 or the next Fortnite? I mean, I'm sure they'd love to be, but is that the plan or expectation? I have a sneaking suspicion that for some of them, it isn't. Let's look at some upcoming games. Let's look at Exo Primal. This is an upcoming game from Capcom where you use mechanized exosuits to fight back hordes of dinosaurs with a team of five in a race to complete objectives faster than another team of five. And in a recent Capcom showcase, it was revealed that Exo Primal would have a battle pass and all the typical live service monetization stuff. Okay, cool. Let's look at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, something you're likely already familiar with. That game's battle pass was notoriously leaked and then later confirmed. Okay, cool. But now take a look at Crash Team Rumble, a multiplayer 4v4 Crash Bandicoot spinoff that just got a release date and went up for pre-orders yesterday. And when you look at those pre-order options, you will see mentions of not one, but two battle passes. But aside from battle passes, do you know what all of these games have in common? None of them are free. These are not free to play games. Which does raise an eyebrow for me and brings me back to the original question of, is the plan actually to live forever? Or would achieving extreme longevity just be a cherry on top of the real goal? That real goal being the same as it is for most games to get you to buy in. And after you've bought in, we don't give a fuck what you do. We got the money. We won. But wait, the devs say, why not leave ourselves an opening? Sure, we're only planning to support this game for about two years, but if we do see significantly more engagement than expected, why not leave ourselves the opportunity to potentially go on forever if we get lucky? You see what I'm saying? Yes, there's promises of battle passes and plenty of content to come, but are we only presented with that to hide the reality that these games are possible Possibly only plan to be supported for a year or two and they have price tags on them as insurance that when we all stop playing for whatever reason be it lack of content or oversaturation and what have you it won't matter because the devs and publishers will have made their money and I'm not trying to present this like it's some kind of evil thing I think it's smart I'm just presenting this as a what if sort of an I wonder because it would kind of make a lot of sense like I said live service is tough to break into right now it's tough to be the game that lives forever when so many others are already that and with much more dedicated fan bases so why not have some insurance and we've seen this before full priced games that transparently plan on ending support and still do battle passes most notably call of duty however 
no one should really try to do what Call of Duty does because no one else has really garnered such an untouchable reputation. But I don't think these games are doing exactly what Call of Duty is. Call of Duty knows it's Call of Duty. So when they do this, they're not just factoring in unit sales when they do their profit projections and whatnot. They don't play it safe. They also assume that you're gonna spend a certain amount on microtransactions. And so if most of us bought Call of Duty and didn't buy anything extra, they'd fucking feel it. But games like Crash Team Rumble are probably saying, look, if this amount of people buy the game, then we're solid, we've made a cake. And if they buy anything else, that's all icing, you know? I mean, it feels like that's the case even looking at the pre-order offers for Crash Team Rumble, where if you buy the Deluxe Edition for just $10 more, you'll get both the Season 1 and Season 2 Battle Passes and a bunch of other goodies. It's almost like all they need you to do is buy in once. <laughs> Or, you know, it's possible that they could just have extreme confidence in the quality of their product. But if I am right about this insurance strategy, we do have to consider the pitfalls that may come with it. Because let's say people buy your game, then the player base diminishes over time and the game is dead in a year. But it's okay, you planned for that. And thanks to the price tag on the game, you've come out profitable. Even in that scenario, it's still a horrible look. Because when you try to come out with another game, people are gonna say, oh no, it's those guys who did that failed thing and be skeptical to buy into anything you do next. So there's a question of how many times can the insurance plan even work? I honestly don't know the answer. And let me say, this is all just me theorizing and thinking out loud to you guys. And in this theory, there's also the possibility that I'm wrong. You know, Crash Team Rumble, although it has a price tag, it is a reduced price tag. It costs $30 rather than the full premium price of 60 on last gen or 70 on current. So it could be that the game is just too expensive to develop so they have to charge something for it but not so expensive to develop that that something they charge would be full price. I mean, honestly, even in that scenario, the price tag is still pretty much just an insurance plan. <laughs> but then you got Exo Primal, which is gonna be a full priced $60 game. However, it is also launching on Game Pass day one, which would indicate a prioritization of player base more so than priority of early profits. I don't know. I find it all very interesting. It almost makes you wonder if there's even a sizable place for non-live service multiplayer anymore. Because games like Call of Duty and the annual sports games might as well be live service and it's actually extremely predatory that they aren't and instead charge full price for incremental iterations. But that's a different can of worms. And anyway, outside of those games, is the pool of non-live service multiplayer really that wide? I'm not too sure, you know, something to chew on, perhaps a question to be answered on a different day. For now, let me know if you think all these games are actually still trying to be these ever-present forever games, or is that something that they'd just be happy to see despite it not being planned? Whatever the case, please like the video if you liked the video, and please, please, please subscribe. But until next time, I am Waifu Belector. I am just a normal guy. I like hentai, and I, for one, am planning to live forever. Goodbye.